Hey everyone, it's Wade Smith here. I'm an application engineer at Capture 3D, and I'm located in our Michigan office. Today we're going to cover a topic called back projection. Maybe you've heard this term at one of our in-house or online events, or maybe you've even seen an example in a demo, and you'd like to learn a little bit more about it, well, you're in the right spot for that. Whether you want to see the deviation of a surface comparison uh, on a die or some sort of tooling that needs some repair possibly, or even an, add a new feature to a prototype part or an existing part that has an engineering change that maybe an updated CAD model isn't available yet. Well, we can accomplish this using the ATOS scanner and ATOS software. And this combination gives us the ability to project an element or a feature's borderlines from the software onto the actual part, utilizing the projector from the sensor. So if you'll imagine here that this is one half of a die set or some sort of tooling, and we wanna determine if any repairs are needed, we can create a surface comparison and check this piece against the CAD model and then project those deviation zones back onto the actual part and visualize exactly where they are and where the repairs need to happen. So let's head into the software. Now we've collected our scans and we can begin to polygonize this data set. And after polygonization is finished, here we are left with the process scans, which is now our mesh. So let's move to our inspection workspace and we can bring in our CAD drag it in say add to part click OK and as always we need an alignment in our project so we can quickly do a pre-alignment now our data sets are lined up we can make this coordinate system invisible we don't need it and up here in the upper toolbar, we'll go to surface comparison and create a surface comparison on CAD. We'll find that surface comparison, make it exclusive, and we can right mouse button click on our legend and go to legend templates and find the GOM 8 color and we'll click that. Once again, right mouse button click on the legend Go to ISO lines and select on surface. Here we'll adjust our values to an acceptable deviation level. And we're making that plus or minus. So here you see the deviation of our color map and it's divided into zones now. And each color represents a zone of deviation. And now we can project these ISO lines onto our part. Now we will move to the live workspace over here on the left of our software. There's a few things we can do in here. Uh, we can define a component, which would be uh, maybe a piece that gets assembled to another piece, uh, put reference points on it, and then we can use those reference points to position it uh, into the correct place to the mating piece. Also, we have touch probe measurements, which allow us to measure features circles, slots, cylinders, planes, and those types of things. And we are going to be working in the uh, project elements on measuring object. So we want to project our surface comparison onto our measuring object. All of these functions uh, require use of uh, reference points that we've previously collected, uh, specifically for the projection mode that we'll be using today. This allows us to project our ISO lines into the correct position. So we need to uh, find our surface comparison in our Explorer and we click on it to highlight it and then we can go to project elements on measuring object. Here it gives you an option to pick the thickness of the lines, the ISO lines that will be projected and I'm going to select medium. As you can see we have the boundary lines for the deviation zones defined by our legend with color and also we can see the projection through the live view. You will notice as I move the part the projection moves as well. 
and that's because of the reference points we collected. The software uses and remembers those points. Looking at the physical part, once again, I can rotate the part and the lines will be placed in the correct location and orientation. Now we can mark directly on the part any areas of interest. Here we could mark this area at the top of our part, as well as down here at the bottom. These zones are both in the red, and we could note to remove 0.35 millimeters of material because this is above our CAD. Or this blue zone here in the middle needs 0.25 millimeters of material added because it's below the CAD model. Another situation that we may use back projection for might be that we need to add a feature to say like this part. It could be for prototype or even engineering change. We need some sort of initial analysis and we're gonna start by projecting the nominal elements onto the actual part. So for this case, we don't need process scan data. All we need is one, maybe two scans. So I'll go ahead and take a scan now. And we have our scan data, and we also have identified our reference points that we'll be using in just a couple of minutes. I'll bring the CAD in, say add to part. Now that's in our project, and we can go ahead and create an alignment, pre-alignment here. And you'll see that the scan data is now in line with our CAD. So here we can go ahead and make the CAD exclusive. We'll drag it into the 3D view. So we'll go to the construct surface point. We'll click a place on the CAD, some arbitrary place. Uh, we can click the drop down where the coordinates are and edit those values to some known value. Here we'll make it some even numbers, just so it makes a little more sense. Select OK. We'll pick the normal direction of Z, create and close. And there we have our surface point on our CAD. Give it a measuring principle of no measuring principle, it's just a nominal feature. We'll go to Construct, Circle, Point, Normal. We'll select the label for the point and also select the label for the normal direction, both being the surface point we created, and we'll give it a some known diameter. Open the Explorer, we'll go to our nominal elements and find our circle and our surface point, and we will select them both by holding down the control key and clicking on each label. Make sure that we're working in the live workspace. We'll give the circle no measuring principle as well. Cleans up our project. We'll go to project elements onto measuring object, and we'll select the medium for this scenario. I'll zoom in on the uh, live image. And you'll be able to see where the circle with a crosshair is projected onto the part. The crosshair is there because we selected the surface point as well. And we could actually mark this out on the part. This way, you could take the part directly to a, a drill press or a punch to create the hole in the part. This is a live view of the sheet metal part outside of the software show you the uh, projection again both the circle and the surface point creating the crosshair so now we have the center as well well that wraps it up for back projection as you saw it only takes a few minutes to create either an inspection or even a new feature that could be projected directly onto the part and then that information can be used for further steps in your process well i hope everyone enjoyed this video once again, if you please click subscribe below and make sure to contact us if you'd like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one or check us out at capture3d.com and we'll see you back here next time.